Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was a British writer and physician. He served during the Second Anglo-Boer War, between March and June of the year 1900, as a volunteer physician, in what is today the Republic of South Africa. Later that year, he wrote a book, titled The Great Boer War, as well as a short work, namely The War in South Africa, Its Cause and Conduct, in which he responded to critics of the United Kingdom's role in the Second Anglo-Boer War and argued that its role was indeed justified. Despite his deep-rooted love for and loyalty to the British Empire, he, unlike most of his English contemporaries, penned down an honest and rather accurate description of the average Boer during that time. Here is what he wrote. Take a community of Dutchmen, of the type of those who defended themselves for 50 years against all the power of Spain, at a time when Spain was the greatest power in the world. Intermix with them a strain of those inflexible French Huguenots, who gave up home and fortune and left their country forever, at the time of the revocation of the Edict of Nantes. The product must obviously be one of the most rugged, virile, unconquerable races ever seen upon Earth. Take this formidable people and train them for seven generations. in constant warfare against savage men and ferocious beasts, in circumstances under which no weakling could survive. Place them so that they acquire exceptional skill with weapons and in horsemanship. Give them a country which is eminently suited to the tactics of the huntsman, the marksman, and the rider. Then, finally, put a finer temper upon their military qualities, by a door fatalistic Old Testament religion and an ardent and consuming patriotism. Combine all these qualities and all these impulses in one individual and you have the modern boar, the most formidable antagonist who ever crossed the path of Imperial Britain. Our military history has largely consisted in our conflicts with France, but Napoleon and all his veterans have never treated us so roughly as these hard-bitten farmers, with their ancient theology and their inconveniently modern rifles. More than 120 years later, and the Boers, despite having adapted over the course of decades to a rapidly changing world, still possess the core characteristics as described by Doyle. They still consider themselves members of a people, the Boer folk, unconditionally bound by blood, tradition, sentiment, customs, language, religion and history into a communal past and future expectation. <laughs>